Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ, and after a couple of weeks away, we're back with another Pokemon Heart Gold Random Card Challenge episode. Last time, we got started in the Elite Four, taking down Will and Koga, and today we're going to be attempting to finish the job. Bruno, Karen, and Lance are sure to pose a serious threat, but so far things have gone pretty well. Alright, let's draw our team for Bruno first. Against the third Elite Four member, we're going to be using the team of Ivysaur, Pikachu, Pidgey, Sentret, and Machamp, which is a real up and down team. Any strong Psychic types could make this a very difficult battle, but otherwise I think Machamp may be enough to get us through. Let's have a look at how our team is setting up for this one. First up, we've got Fival the Pikachu at level 42 with Thunder Punch, Thunder Wave, Iron Tail, and Volt Tackle. Cabbage the Ivysaur is also at 42 with Sludge Bomb, Sleep Powder, Leech Seed, and Solar Beam. Our third level 42 is Flugelhorn the Pidgey, whose moveset is made up of Quick Attack, Sand Attack, Wing Attack, and Fly. I considered also teaching Pidgey Faint Attack instead of Fly to make it a full-on attacking moveset, but in the end decided against it. One level higher than Flugelhorn is Scout the Sentret at 43. The normal type has Return, Amnesia, Sucker Punch, and Dig in her moveset, which covers a few bases just in case we need them. Finally, we have Suri in the Machamp at level 46, with the moves Cross Chop, Strength, Dynamic Punch, and Earthquake. The superpower Pokemon is so powerful that only a dangerous Psychic type can really hurt us. Alright, let's get into this. We send out Pikachu to start, and Bruno leads off with Donphan. So, not ideal. Knowing that a ground type move is likely coming next though, we switch out to Pidgey, but instead Donphan goes for Slam. The attack misses the mark, and after Flugelhorn strikes with Wing Attack, we make another switch, recalling the Tiny Bird and sending in Ivysaur. Cabbage quickly uses Sleep Powder to put Donphan to sleep, and then takes in Light and unleashes a Solar Beam that wipes out the Sleeping Ground type. That went surprisingly well. Next up is Wobbuffet. That is a somewhat powerful Psychic type, but not in the conventional sense. There's not much he can do to us without our help, so we just have to play this one slow. After using Leech Seed, which is particularly effective thanks to Wobbuffet's high HP, Cabbage connects with Sludge Bomb. Bruno fails his Pokemon by mistakenly calling for counter, and with full health, we can take our time to go for another Solar Beam. Once again, it's a successful attack, and Ivysaur's got another KO under his belt. Bruno sends in Beautifly next, and we switch out to Scout the Sentret. Bug Buzz zaps the normal type before she can strike with Sucker Punch, but a Giga Drain makes that almost pointless. Sentret goes down with the bug barely damaged, so we send Flugelhorn back in to wreak some revenge. Pidgey soars into the air and darts down to connect with Fly, but Beautifly is prepared and attacks again with Bug Buzz. It deals some decent damage, but not enough. Another wing attack strikes the bug, taking him down and leaving Bruno with two. Milotic's the fourth team member out for Bruno, and Pidgey does incredibly on low health to hinder the water type's vision and leave him hurt. Eventually, the water serpent strikes with his tail, knocking out Pidgey and leaving us in a three on two. Fival enters the battle for the first time and thunders into Milotic with Volt Tackle, which takes him down and leaves the third Elite Four member with a single Pokemon remaining. Kingler's out last, and even though Pikachu could probably deal with him, we recall the Electric Mouse to allow Surian to see some action. It's a back and forth matchup which Machamp eventually wins, but it was closer than I expected. In the end, this one wasn't too bad, and we've now only got a single Elite Four member to go. That final trainer is Karen, and like all the others, she'll be using a team of five. Against the final Elite Four member, we're going to be using the team of Metapod, Squirtle, Dodrio, Mistrevious, and Geodude. That is a slightly questionable team. Dodrio is going to be key here, with Squirtle and Geodude covering the flying type's weaknesses, although Ice will likely still be a problem. Let's have a look at the team. Starting with Sol the Metapod, who's at level 42, with the moves Tackle, Harden, String Shot, and Bug Bite. Leo the Squirtle's also at 42, with Surf, Iron Defense, Hidden Power, and Blizzard. Kyra the Dodrio's two levels higher at 44, with the moves Quick Attack, Acupressure, Return, and Fly. Next up, we've got Kiowa the Mistrevious, who's one level higher at 45, with Shadow Ball, Confuse Ray, Parish Song, and Psybeam. Lastly, we have Lebowski the Geodude at level 47, with the moves Stone Edge, Explosion, Double Edge, and Earthquake. It's a powerful moveset, and with Sturdy as his ability, there's definitely going to be at least one chance to get a hit in. Alright, let's give this a go. Karen leads off with Uemize, and we send in Metapod first. A truly thrilling Elite Four matchup. Figuring there's probably not much to be done, we recall Sol and send in Dodrio. Ilumise uses Flatter to confuse the flying type, whose three heads peck at each other for a bit before finally helicoptering into the air and plummeting to Earth, landing on and squashing the bug. Karen sends in her Dunsparce next, which makes it seem like she's going for some sort of challenge run. Kyra sharply raises her defense with Acupressure before Dunsparce connects with a tame takedown. 
Dodrio's smashing return hits a lot harder, but Dunsparce has a trick up her sleeve with Ancient Power. The rocks pile up on top of the triple bird, leaving her unconscious, which is an eerily early loss for our star player. We send in Leo the Squirtle next, and he outspeeds Dunsparce, sending a crashing wave slamming into the Land Snake and handing us the advantage once again. Varret's out next for Karen, and now it's really starting to seem like her entire team was set up as a joke. This doesn't feel like much of an Elite Four team. I do appreciate the different approach, though. The Longtail Pokemon is clearly one of Karen's favourites, though, because as soon as there's a risk of Squirtle scoring a knockout, she breaks out a full restore. That's enough to save Ferret and allow the normal type to slam down the water starter, levelling up the match at 3 to 3. We send in Kiowa next, who should be able to hold up well with her immunity. Mistrevious confuses Ferret and attacks repeatedly with Psybeam, but Karen calls for rest, so we're back to square one. There's no way Kiowa can score a knockout before Ferret wakes up and uses rest again, so we recall the ghost in favour of Geodude. Lebowski enters and rocks the battlefield with an earthquake that shakes up the sleeping Pokemon. It's not enough to earn a knockout though, so Ferret wakes up and Karen tells her to go right back to sleep. Another earthquake shakes up the already broken battlefield, leading to a critical hit one-shot that gives us back the advantage. Karen's penultimate Pokemon is Lopunny, and although that's a marked improvement on what she's shown thus far, it's not a great matchup against Lebowski. The rabbit actually almost overcomes Geodude using only Dizzy Punch and Bounce, which is really quite impressive considering the not very effective attacks in Geodude's defense. She leaves the rock Pokemon paralyzed with only 16 hit points remaining, but Lebowski just about gets over the line with Earthquake. Karen sends in Swellow last, but by choosing not to attack, she's lost herself the battle. Geodude uses Explosion, which further decimates the battlefield as well as the only Pokemon in sight. The final Elite Four member goes down without putting up too much of a fight, but against the team we drew, that's probably for the best. And then there was one. Only the champion remains. We're going to need a full team of six for our face-off with Lance, and here it is. We're going to be using Roselia, Nidorina, Growlithe, Waylord, Meowth, and Sandshrew. That's a pretty interesting one. It's certainly a good type spread with grass, fire, water, and ground all covered. That said, we do only have one fully evolved Pokemon for the third consecutive battle. I think we might need a bit of luck on our side, but this team has a lot of decent Pokemon. Let's have a look. First up is Kazan the Roselia. At level 46, he's got Petal Dance, Toxic, Leech Seed, and Sludge Bomb. Aria the Nidorina's at level 49 with the moves Poison Jab, Toxic Spike, Shadow Claw, and Crunch. Up third is Balto the Growlithe, who's also at 49 with the moves Flare Blitz, Crunch, Dig, and Iron Tail. Falco the Wailord is one level lower at 48, and her moveset's made up of Surf, Rest, Hyper Beam, and Blizzard. Next up, we've got Brownie the Meowth, who's also at 48 with Bite, Screech, Aerial Ace, and Slash. Finally, we've got Harina the Sandshrew, who's all the way up at level 50 and has the moves Earthquake, Sand Attack, Defense Curl, and Slash. Alright, this may be the end of the road for us. Even if we can't defeat Lance, I'll maybe run through Kanto with the teams I drew just because I'd like to see how they'll fare. Okay, let's get into it. The Pokemon League Champion sends in Dustox, which is a fairly considerable downgrade from the Gyarados who's usually first in his party. That said, Kazan can't do much of anything with Dustox resisting all of his attacks. So, we start the battle by immediately recalling Roselia in favour of Meowth. Brownie isn't going to have many opportunities to knock out a Pokemon in this one, but Aerial Ace might just give her a chance here. That turns out to be rather easy with Lance calling for Light Screen and Toxic, allowing the normal type to land two gliding strikes on the bug, earning us the first win of the match. Meowth is badly poisoned, but other than that, we're in good shape. Lance sends in Snorlax next, and that's a bit more of a natural fit for a champion. Meowth has already gone above and beyond, so there's not much point in switching out to spare the Poison Cat. Instead, we call for Screech twice before Snorlax can get his hands on Brownie, crunching down to tie things up. Meowth's put us in a strong spot, though. Snorlax's defense has been lowered by four stages, meaning that physical hits are really going to hurt. With that in mind, we send in Aria next, and predicting a block to start, we go for Toxic Spikes. That pans out perfectly with Lance stopping Aria from escaping, but we don't want to go anywhere. A pair of Poison Jabs cut down Snorlax with him only managing to score a single crunch on Nidorina. Bronzong's out next for the champion, and this is starting to look like a reasonable team that Lance has assembled. That is until he does precisely nothing to stop Arya from ringing the Bronze Bell with Shadow Claw and Crunch. Even though they're not doing much, Nidorina's persistent attacks leave Lance's third Pokemon in red health before a Gyro Ball finally takes her down. We send in Balto the Growlithe, who wastes no time in charging down the Steel and Psychic type. Lance uses a full restore just before Growlithe hits with Flare Blitz, but it doesn't make any difference. Racing headfirst into a 400 pound metal bell would probably be rather painful, so the large chunk of recoil damage makes perfect sense. 
Lance sends in his Blissey next and it feels like this team is starting to take shape. It's a bit of a mix and match defensive team, even Dustox's best stats are defense and special defense. Blissey has two major problems though. The first being the toxic spike she landed on when she entered the battle, and the second being a pathetic physical defense stat that cannot match her HP or special defense. Balto strikes again with Flare Blitz, slamming into Blissey so hard that without being hit, the fire type has knocked himself out with recoil damage alone. Maybe Blissey took a page out of Happy Eenie's book and just used a massive white stone instead of an egg. That leaves us in a 3 on 2, and not knowing who our next opponent will be, we send in Sandshrew. That turns out to be a major stroke of luck when Lance ends in his Scun Tank whose only weakness happens to be ground type moves. The Poison type actually manages to set himself first and fire off a flamethrower, but Harina survives the hit and starts an earthquake that leaves Lance's penultimate Pokemon down for the count. The champion throws his final Pokeball into the air, revealing his last Pokemon to be... Entei. Well, he certainly saved the best for last. Sandshrew prepares to send another Earthquake rippling across the field, but the Volcano Pokemon's speed is too much. The legendary Pokemon's Flamethrower quickly engulfs Harina, knocking her out immediately. That leaves us with Roselia and Wailord. Wanting to give the Water type the best chance possible of getting us over the line, we bring Kazan back into battle first. Hopefully he can deal some damage at least. Another Flamethrower connects, but somehow Kazan lives with 6 hit points remaining. The smoke billowing from the charred flowers masks the sludge bomb that flies through the air hitting Entei directly. That massively weakens the legendary beast who just about survives, also in red hell. The sludge bomb lingers though, poisoning Entei and finishing him off. From full health, Kazan the Roselia has bested Entei in battle. A legendary Pokemon who was superior on paper in just about every way imaginable. The Pokemon League is ours and Falco the Wailord has basically been given a free pass into the Hall of Fame. Alright, now we just gotta get going on our Kanto Gym Badge Challenge. This is a good stopping point though, so we'll get started with all of that in the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>